6-inch ultralight long-range drone, under 400 grams dry weight. On paper, it sounds like the perfect tool for efficiency and distance, but flying it in the mountains is a completely different story. After publishing the build video of my Proto 6 Raptor, I finally took this drone to real terrain, real altitude, real distance, and real conditions. Some things worked exactly as planned, others didn't. Today, I want to share my first mountain flights with the Proto 6, what surprised me the most, what problems showed up immediately, and what the next steps for this build will be. Although the weather wasn't ideal, I decided to head for the mountains anyway to test the drone under real conditions. Another pilot joined me, and we visited several spots on this cloudy, but mostly windless winter day. Let's jump straight into the first flight. We chose a north-facing wall visible directly from a parking lot, with a distance of around 2 kilometers. No problem for our drones, good line of sight, and hopefully a nice ridge to fly at the top. For this flight, I chose the 1800 mAh LiPo battery, resulting in an all-up weight of about 670 grams. The climb up to over 1,000 meters worked very well. The drone feels controlled and predictable. However, I immediately noticed some shaking in the OSD again. Unfortunately, this shaking became more noticeable compared to my test flights at home. The raw for footage is even worse than what you see in the OSD, and I wasn't able to smooth it using Gyroflow, as you can see here as a result. This is definitely an issue I will need to spend more time on. Fortunately, Patty Flips from Proto FPV already reached out to me with some valuable hints on how to get rid of the shaky footage. I really appreciate that. At the moment, I'm waiting for his dampeners and some TPU to test different solutions. During the flight, I lost orientation and ended up in my first GPS rescue situation with this drone. That means we can immediately check this test off the list. It's good to know that GPS rescue works exactly as configured and that the fail-safe procedure does its job properly. Apart from this complete loss of connection scenario, both the VTX and receiver links are extremely solid. I think the antenna setup provided by Proto FPV is outstanding. On the way back, I took the chance to fly through this small canyon. The drone is incredibly fun to fly and has plenty of power in every situation. This is not typical long-range handling at all. It feels agile, responsive, and much more playful than expected. Compared to my other 6-inch drone, the Bob 57, the Proto 6 feels noticeably more agile and responsive. Finding the home point is easy. The parking lot is close to the road and just before the river. Battery capacity was more than sufficient, and we stayed airborne for over seven minutes on this flight. The second flight was planned as a proper long-range test with the 5000 mAh lithium-ion battery. At the same time, I wanted to compare the Proto 6 directly to my other 6-inch drone, the Bob 57. I sent the Bob 57 out first in its usual configuration with a GoPro bones at just over 1,100 grams all-up weight. Shortly after that, I launched the Proto 6 with the same battery and a total weight of 864 grams, about 240 grams less. For this initial comparison, I didn't focus on flying exactly the same speed or route. My goal was to compare controllability, 
link quality, and power reserves when flying back. During the initial climb toward the ridge, the ampermeter of the Proto-6 is slightly lower, but the drone is also flying a bit slower. Later in the flight, both drones reach similar speeds and show very similar current draw. At first glance, there is no huge difference. Both drones arrive at the peak at almost the same time. The time code is slightly off because the Proto-6 was armed about 15 seconds before takeoff. I heard a strange noise when arming and did a quick visual check before really taking off. At the peak, the difference in energy consumption is less than 100 milliamps. This is very interesting. The Bob is heavier by around 240 grams, but it runs 1500 kV motors instead of the 1700 kV motors on the Proto-6. It might also benefit slightly from better aerodynamics due to the side plates. The combination of lower KV motors and three-blade props seems to be very efficient. The good news for the Proto-6, it is just as efficient, or even slightly more efficient. The even better news, it has noticeably more power in reserve if needed. Compared to the Proto-6, the Bob feels a bit sluggish and less responsive. On the way back, we increase speed. The bob becomes slightly faster, and its current draw increases accordingly. Back at the home point, both drones have consumed around 3,000 milliampere. The Proto-6 ends up with about one extra minute of flight time and roughly 300 meters more distance flown. Overall, both drones perform very similarly. But the Proto-6 offers some clear advantages. Available power, responsiveness, and reserves when flying back. If you slow it down, you can gain additional efficiency and make it home more comfortably when capacity gets low. What I still don't know is how the Proto-6 will behave in stronger winds, especially at ridges and peaks, but I think I'll be able to test that soon. The last spot of the day is one of my favorites, a mountain with a large canyon from top to bottom and excellent line of sight. I've flown here before with the Recon Y6 and the Nazgul last winter. For this short adrenaline flight, I chose the 1550 mA LiPo. With an all-up weight of just 655 grams, the drone should be extremely agile and capable of fast maneuvers. The climb is easy with very low current draw thanks to the low weight. This keeps battery stress minimal during ascent.
Behind the mountain, you can spot a lake. Unfortunately, not in its beautiful blue colors today. small circle at the peak, one last look at the lake, and then we dive into the canyon. I expected the confidence to increase with the O4 image quality and solid connection, but the flat light and bad weather made it difficult to see contrasts. Still, the flight feels good. Let's enjoy the dive while I wrap up my thoughts about the Proto 6 after these first flights. So what's my conclusion after the first real mountain flights with the Proto 6 Raptor? The concept works. An ultralight 6-inch long-range drone under 400 grams dry weight is not just a theoretical exercise. In real terrain, the Proto 6 proves to be efficient, powerful, and surprisingly agile. It doesn't feel like a typical long-range drone at all. And that's exactly what I like about it. At the same time, this build is clearly not finished yet. The shaky footage is an issue that needs to be solved. I'm confident that with proper dampening and some tuning, this can be fixed. Wind performance is another open question, especially in alpine terrain and at exposed ridges. And the open frame design without side plates will need to prove itself over time in fog, moisture, and rough conditions. But after these first flights, I can already say this. The Proto 6 has earned its place in my fleet. There's still work to do. And that's exactly what makes this project exciting. If you want to see how this setup performs in stronger winds, how the vibration issues are solved, and how far this ultralight build can really go in the mountains, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next flights. Cheers.